would like to call the eighth regular meeting of the 2019-2020 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Communication is the real work of leadership. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present, and Alderperson Donnie Hugh is attending remotely. Thank you very much. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, the Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led by a special young man today that's uh, going to be celebrating his Eagle Scout uh, in banquet very soon, and we'll introduce him to you later. I'd like to thank Alexander Cunningham for leading us today. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. All the person will. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to approve. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Uh, next item is a resignation. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. That uh, motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Uh, next item is public forum. City Clerk. There is no one this evening. Thank you very much. Then we'll go on to Mayor's announcements.
Okay, next we'll uh, go on to the consent agenda. That will include items 2.3 through 2.14. All the person will. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Is there a second? Thank you for that support. These items are before us. Is there any discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Alderperson Thornton. Eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.5 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 will be uh, will laze over, and 4.2 will be referred to finance and personnel committee. Under reports of committee, item 5.1 is RC number 69 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred RO number 39 of 1920 by the City Administrator, submitting a request on behalf of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation requesting the use of the one of the city days uh, for 2019 on Wednesday, November 13th for the 2019 SCDC's annual meeting to be held at the Blue Harbor Convention Center. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and grant the request. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, could the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 70 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 42 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, awarding the sale of $6,655,000 in general obligation corporate purpose bond series uh, 2019A. All the person um, Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, did you want Carol Worth to come up and uh, fill the rest of the council in besides finance on what the interest rates, et cetera, are on, this, on these issues? I think that would be prudent. Okay. Carol? Good evening. I am going to walk you through this handout, and I'm going to take you through just the first couple of pages because it summarizes everything else that's behind it, okay? so. As you've seen on your agenda, the dollar amount was uh, 6655000 Well, the handout at the, the very first item references 6630000 so we've actually reduced this issue by $25,000. And uh, uh, to give you a little background on, the, on actually all three issues that we're going to be eventually talking about here is um, the $6 million issue is a borrowing for the city's uh, capital improvement projects and a small portion for some refinancing of some existing debt. And the next issue is $4,225,000. They're called general obligation community development bonds, which is for TIF projects. And the third one uh, is on the agenda reference, that's 3,315,000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds. That issue also was reduced to the size of $2,960,000. And that is strictly for refinancing 
a 2010 bonds for savings. And uh, the reason they have been reduced is because when you sell bonds in the marketplace, uh, you receive what's called premium from the investors. When you get the premium, you use it to downsize your borrowing. So we have a little bit more premium on the first issue, but we had over $300,000 of premium on the third issue. So therefore, we just reduced the amount of bonds that you're, that you're issuing. Uh, so with that, we prepared the city to go into the bond market. And we do that with uh, what's called an official statement, which is really a prospectus on the city. And we distribute a notice into the marketplace to let underwriters know uh, when and how to submit bids. And we also go through the bond rating process with Moody's. So for the results, Moody's has reaffirmed the city's double A2 bond rating. And there is a credit report in this handout. So I'll, I'll take you to that briefly. In terms of the bidding results, this morning we received bids. The first issue, again, was referenced as 6655000 And the projected interest rate was 2.45. But when we received the bids, we received five bids. So the first page shows you um, the winning bidder on that issue was UBS Financial Services. And they had a true interest rate of 2.35%. Uh, because we received some premium, we downsized it to the 6630000 What this is doing is, again, providing dollars for your, your capital improvement projects. And the refinancing portion is now um, saving, has a savings of a little over $22,000. Okay. The next page has the same information for the next issue, which is 4225 community development bonds. This issue size did not change. The projected rate was 2.67. When we took bids this morning, we received five bids. The winning bidder is Robert W. Baird at a rate of 2.57. So the difference between the 6.7 and the 5.7 is about $44,700 of less interest. And the third issue is the taxable refunding bond, originally gone to market at 3315000 a projected rate of 3.04. And that one, we received 12 bids. And the winning bidder was Mesero Financial. The true interest rate was a 2.47, but there was over $300,000 of premium. And as a result, we brought the issue size down to the 2960 level. And that we did strictly for savings. And when we did a projection, uh, we were anticipating savings of about $276,000. And we ended up with savings of $354,000. So very successful sale. There are three resolutions attached to my handout. And they are what's called the award resolutions. Your approval of them will approve the borrowing terms, lock in the interest rates and tax levies, and awards the bonds to the respective winning bidder. Also, two of the resolutions that we talked about refinancing contain what's called notices of call. You're authorizing us to notify the bondholders of a 2012 notes and 2010 bonds that their interest will stop on August 16th of 2019, at which time we're going to take some of the money that's been borrowed here and pay them off. So we're basically exchanging the debt for a lower interest rate and taking advantage of savings. The notices would be published tomorrow. The closing is July 29th. That means all the money that you borrowed is going to come in at one time. Uh, if it's for projects, it goes into your project accounts. If, it goes, if it's for refinancing, it goes into a debt service account until those 2012 and 2010 bonds can be paid off on August 16th. Okay. So this is followed by some schedules. I'll just tell you what's on the schedule on page 3 is the repayment schedule for the first issue, the 6630000 So it shows you how you're paying principal back, 
Okay, that's a 15-year repayment. It's a bond issue. And the next page is what's called a pricing schedule. A lot of numbers on here, but um, the main numbers is the yield column, and that is the market. That's what the investor is actually getting. In order to get the coupon, which is the column to the left of it, and you'll see those are all at three. Okay? The, the, the investor pays a premium. That means he gives you more principal up front. So the dollar price column shows you that, well, the price column shows you 102.275, which means anything that's over 100 means he's paying more than $100 for $100 worth of bonds. So all of that math adds up to the dollar price column. You can see the bottom of the dollar price column that this produced $6,996,245 and you're selling $6,630,000 of bonds. So that's why when we get that much premium, that goes into the math below, which shows that um, the underwriter keeps some to pay expenses. He's responsible as part of his bid to pay the expenses of issuance. And then the rest of the money comes back to the city. Now, anything over six million six thirty is going to be available to go into debt service and can downsize your impact on your tax levy. So you're going to have quite a few dollars there for for tax relief. And the true interest rate is way at the bottom, and that's where the two point three five percent comes from. So it's all three percents in the coupon, or which means interest rate, but when you get that premium back, that's what reduces that uh, total effective rate. The next page is the same type of a showing, but for the $4,225,000. You'll see this goes out a little bit longer. Uh, principal starts in 2022 and goes out to 2038, so um, 19 years. And you will do this type of a structure when you are you're working with uh, community development and you get the project be built and then starts producing increment to start paying off the debt service. So that's the reason you see that type of a repayment schedule. And then page six is the same exercise with the pricing. Again, the yield column is the market. All threes on the coupon column, but the dollar price column adds up to more than four million two twenty five. That's the premium. So the city will be getting back premium on this one as well. And again, you can use the premium to offset the debt service in 2020, and in some cases, part of 2021. Works out very well. Okay. The next page is the refunding. So you will see the repayment schedule is, now this was a issue that only went out to 2027, because that was the term of the existing debt. We didn't go out beyond the existing term. So the new issue goes out to the same term. The bottom, the bottom part of page 7 shows you the comparison of the 2019 bonds to the 2010 bonds that we're paying off. And then the column to the far right is your final net debt service savings because it does include expenses. So you can see there you're going to be saving about $44,000 a year. And that rolls up to the 353 number in, in, in total over those years. Okay. And the following page is the same thing. Um, now, the, this is a taxable issue, so it's a little bit um, difficult to tell sometimes. Uh, normally, the difference between a tax exempt and a taxable is much greater. But in this market where interest rates are so low, the yield column um, is also very, very low for a taxable issue. And you'll see the coupon column is all at fives. And that's the reason why the investors were paying, look at the price column, as high as 117 for $100 worth of bonds, you see. So tremendous amount of premium on this one. Tremendous. And they want that in order to get the fives. Okay, So that's okay because then what we do is we're giving them more on the fives than we would have if um, they had no premium they'd be getting the yield column as their coupon. So if they want the fives, we cut back on the principal. So it balances it out. Okay. So again, lots of premium resulted in a, a downsizing. And the true interest cost on this one is a 2.48. Again, much shorter, but 
uh, very good results for uh, taxable. That's followed by Moody's credit report. And the very first page, it says uh, credit opinion. The summary is truly the summary of how they arrive at your AA2. And it talks about your healthy operating reserves, number one. And that provides uh, financial flexibility and liquidity. Uh, it talks about the tax base is experiencing renewed growth. That's a very positive statement we've been waiting a long time to hear. So that's, that's, that's very good to see. Uh, they talk about fixed costs, and fixed costs typically is a combination of, of debt payments and um, pension, any other type of liabilities will fall under that. They also, as part of, and, and they do make a comment that they do expect them to remain manageable. Um, as part of our rating call, we do talk about the city's capital improvement borrowing, what the intentions are with regard to borrowing going forward. So we have credit strengths, and you'll see now we um, have our operating reserves, our financial picture, as well as a growing tax base. So uh, that's, that's um, good to hear. The uh, challenges, of course, are uh, individual uh, income levels and uh, levy limits, which are out of your control. So your rating, your rating is made up of things in your control and out of your control. So this is out of your control. And things that could lead to an upgrade and a downgrade, which are typically offsetting factors. And then you get to the next page. Um, I know the bottom part. The top part are key indicators, which is used by people in the industry to compare a AA2 Sheboygan to maybe a, a AA2 in another state. The profile, and then you have uh, detailed credit considerations. Now you're going to see paragraphs about each of the things that was in their summary. One paragraph about the economy and growing tax base, a paragraph about your uh, financial operations and reserves. Okay, So we talked about um, liquidity. And the next page uh, gets into your debt, your pension, and OPEB. And it's a little bit harder to explain because Moody's has their own methodology for comparing pensions and OPEBs. They see uh, quite a variety uh, of, of different models. And in order to do an apples to apples comparison for Moody's database, they've come up with their own methodology. So they have a little graph at the bottom that shows um, uh, the system that's reported by the state, uh, which is the very, very tiny bar graph. And so you can see it's getting, technically it's getting better. but when you look at their um, own methodology, you'll see how it looks like it's going in the opposite direction. So that's the reason why it's very hard to explain. So I think it's kind of nice that they now, this is something new. They did not report it that way before. So whenever you got a question, it was like, we have no way of explaining it. But at least now you can see that you can give credit for the fact that um, what does this, your state pension look like versus Moody's methodology. So, so that's kind of good news. And the other, the last page, um, uh, what's new is uh, a scorecard. Yeah, we've talked about a scorecard before, but um, now they've decided to put more information in their credit reports. And they have categories. And they have four categories, and they have a couple of subcategories. And even though this gives us, number one, the measure is your statistics. And then the score, they've given us the letter rating. Um, we also have it requested and have the numeric version because it, if it says A or double A, we don't know if it's a A1, A2, A3, or a double A1, 2, or 3. We don't know how close you are to either one by just this showing. So the numeric version we have um, helps us a little identify that better. But you can see. The economy, near tax base, puts you into a double-A category. Okay. Uh, there are some subcategories, which is a per capita and family income. Now, that's strictly what your population number divided into your tax base. That's what gives you a per capita. Okay. So as your population grows, that number gets better. 
and your family median income levels. Okay, that's in the A category. Now A is below a double A. Now look at your finances. All right, and this is weighted at 30% of your scoring. And you'll see there that you're in the strong AAA category for your finances. So indeed, your finances is um, uh, carrying a very uh, significant part of your rating score. And management, uh, management, even though it sounds like it should be something reflected um, internally here, management really is a score that Moody's assigns to all cities in the state of Wisconsin. So that's what they mean by your institutional framework. Um, they call the institution the state of Wisconsin, and the cities have an A, and all school districts have another ca uh, rating. So, so that's just assigned to you. That's nothing that you um, can change. Uh, debt and pensions, which is 20%. Um, again, it shows you all in the single A category. So all of that rolls up to what they have a scorecard indicator of a double A3. However, you go into committee and now you have a subjective portion of your rating process. And discussion takes place for things that just can't be scored as a number. Okay, they see um, other, other factors that we've talked about or, or um, that they see a trend and we get credit for that. And so um, that brings us up to a double A2 rating. Okay. So again, we haven't seen this. This is just brand new in terms of how Moody's is approaching their reports. So it gives us a chance to go through that with you. Okay. So that's your credit report and the resolutions that you have. I'm not going to take you through all of them, but I will tell you that the Series A and Series B are tax exempt issues. Uh, so what that means is that you have to not only be following federal, state law, but federal law with regard to the issuance. You have to spend the money within 24 months from the day you receive it. Uh, so it, they're all, the security is the tax levy, but that does not mean that all of the debt service needs to be on the tax levy. It just means that's the security. So, for example, if you have uh, increment coming from TIF, you can abate your levy with that increment. So, um, the first Series A is general obligation debt tax levy for projects. The second one is your tax incremental districts, which um, has that security, but again, can be offset or abated with an increment. And the third one is a taxable refunding bond. The whole purpose is only to pay off the existing 2010 issue, and, um, and it's taxable because the issue that we're refinancing was taxable. So you cannot combine them with a tax exempt issue. They must remain separate. Each one of these has um, the, what's called the bid tab showing the bidders. Each one of these has a copy of the bid form attached to it as an exhibit from the underwriter. Each one of them has a notice of sale that went out into the market, uh, giving bidders instructions. Each one of them has the debt service and the pricing schedule that you've seen in the beginning part of the report. Okay. Carol, thank you much for that complete mm -hmm. report. Does anybody have any questions of Carol? Alderperson Sorensen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks, Carol, for coming up and presenting this information today. It's always a pleasure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I did have one question regarding our credit challenges. Um, I, I'm just wondering if you can kind of go more in depth about the weak resident income levels and kind of what that means and what that would look like and what an ideal situation um, would be to improve some of those. It's, it's, and, and definitely the levy limits, I, I know that's frustrating that we don't have any controls over that, but it's kind of disheartening that the state can be punitive on our credit scores as well as other cities. But if you can go kind of on that first point, a little more information, I'm just curious kind of more what that means okay. um, and kind of what that looks like for the future. Um, and for the residents of our city. Okay, what they're comparing there is um, information that is available um, through the Census Bureau. And they take, um, I should know this, American Community, but anyways, it's a five-year history and it produces your per capita income. Um, it produces um, ages of, of individuals, so you get a median age for your community. Uh, 
So uh, they call those socioeconomic indices that they pull off of the census information. And right now they're up to 2017. Okay, that's the most current number. And they compare them. Uh, and according to you know Moody's, when they look at the numbers for your uh, city of Sheboygan compared to the state and compared to national numbers, um, they consider them to still be below, below, below an average. Now, in terms of what can the city do, I think the city indirectly tries to influence that with uh, employment opportunities, with housing opportunities and economic development decisions. And, but that is one characteristic that does take a long time to, to change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seeing no other questions, Carol, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. The uh, motion on the floor, um, Jim, I'm going to assume that that was as amended by the committee. Uh, well, yes, there was motion made, but it was just to uh, approve the documents, and so we need them as amended by the committee. Okay, we have a, a revision of the motion and, uh, and a second. So that uh, motion is before us now on item 5.2. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number. Uh, Carol, you can sit down if you'd like. I think. Oh, uh, okay. If we need anything else, we'll call you back up. Item 5.3 is RC number 71 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tuma's referred resolution number 43 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Boren awarding the sale of 4225000 in general obligation community development bond series 2019B. Alderperson Boren. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf. Aye. Alderperson Donahue. Aye. Alderperson Bourne. Aye. Uh, Alderperson Phillips. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Ackley. Aye. And Felby. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 72 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 44 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Boren awarding the sale of 3,315,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2019C. All the person Boren.
Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I'm back on. <laughs> 10 eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is RC number 73 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. <coughs> to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 48 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a contract for engineering services regarding road improvements on Taylor Drive between Superior Avenue and Indiana Avenue and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is RC number 74 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. To whom is referred direct referral resolution number 49 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a contract for engineering services regarding the road improvements on State Highway 23 slash Kohler Memorial Drive slash Erie Avenue between South Taylor Drive and North 9th Street recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is RC number 75 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 50 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a contract for engineering services regarding road improvements on State Highway 28 slash 14th Street between North Avenue and Indiana Avenue and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.8 is RC number 76 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 51 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute three engagement letters with Quarles and Brady LLP to serve as bond counsel for the city of Sheboygan. All their person Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I take a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.9 is RC number 77 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred Direct referral number 50, resolution number 52 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement for the installation and commissioning of new heating, ventilating, and air conditioning controls at the uh, Mead Public Library. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Ten eyes.
motion passes. Item 5.10 is RC number 78 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. Dumas referred general ordinance number 4 of 1920 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen, creating a no parking, stopping, or standing zone on the east side of North Point Drive between the North Point Circle and Barrett Street and recommends adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. This is a good example of uh, constituents coming forward with a problem in their neighborhood or, or uh, um, concern of, uh, of issues and bringing it to Public Works, to their alders, and allowing us to, to help them in relieving the situation in a, in a good neighborly way. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have some concerns on where people are to park on that street. And pardon me? The other side. The other side? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, are all good. No other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Nine ayes, one abstain. Motion passes. General, under general ordinances, items 6.1 through 6.8 will be referred to various committees. And next we'll turn it over for other matters authorized by law to City Attorney Charles Adams. 7.1 is a resolution by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract regarding the bulkhead line survey of the Sheboygan River and Lake Michigan shoreline. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract regarding surveying services for the proposed Union Pacific Trail. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.3 is a resolution by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Rebuild It Service Group to purchase and install a rebuilt clarifier drive at the wastewater treatment facility. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Tonight I'd also like to send a special thanks to all Administrator Hoffland, Finance Director Marty Halverson and our budget analyst Carrie Arentz for all the work that was done on these documents that we talked on our, our bonding. Uh, we talked about some savings that we'll get just because of the, the, the bond pricing that we got, but we also had a significant amount of savings as we refinanced some of our past debt. So it was a total win for the city. Thank you very much. With that, uh, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time.